Glow Warriors. Warriors. Let me get my mouth to work. Everyone doing okay? Day before Turkey Day? Don't forget the giving part of Thanksgiving. Hi, Shahab. How are you? Morning, Brock. Okay, so uh, here we are in the Euro. Testing 110 support again. Um, conventionally, uh, you would buy it here with a tight stop. And, you know, I'm not saying it won't work. But I'm always a little skeptical. We had the first retest of support back here. So maybe it doesn't pay to be skeptical. Thank you, Forex Gal. And then here's the second test. We got this bounce. And here's the third test. And it kind of flies in the face of my philosophy of the market. That, you know, you have to be careful when the markets make it too convenient for you. So it's saying, okay, you miss this breakout. I'm going to give you another chance to get long. All right. Oh, you missed this retest, second one. I'm going to give you a chance to get long. This is Mr. Market saying this to you. And, you know, it's my belief that markets will shake out as many participants as possible before the move, the move they're looking for manifests and then most likely without them. Anyone ever experienced Mr. Market doing that to you? Hello, Julian. Nice to meet you. I know I have. <laughs> oh, we <weak>, dark star. <laughs> yeah, we have it sometimes. It seems like we have to be a masochist to do this. So we have Saeed with us today, Trader 1Z. Great way to end the holiday week. Uh, we're not going to be broadcasting Friday. So uh, good time. I, I do believe we are going to have a Cyber Monday special. I think it starts Friday. So for those of you that have been looking for, um, you know, an even better deal than 10 pips a month on a standard contract, yeah, I think you'll get uh, two months for that 10 pips. So anyway, so... I, I don't trust it as a bottom line to buy it here. You know, sometimes uh, the obvious things work. I also remember an old market master, and you probably have to be, oh, I don't know, prehistoric like me. Do you remember a guy named Joe Granville? Anyone out there? He had a very big reputation in the 80s. I know you guys weren't born yet. But one of his maxims, which, you know, I take to heart, is what is most obvious is obviously wrong. Okay, so uh, thank you, Abraham. Uh, looking around, uh, uh, what's new? We have a new all a new all time high in the S and P's. Anyone surprised? Yeah, actually confirming on the daily on the S and P now. So the divergences didn't work. Maybe a confirmed high <laughs> will work. Uh, anyway, I know that there were some, I want to see Blake's chart and Steve's. I remember someone talking about 3140, 3150, some type of resistance up here. I'm still trying it. Started scaling in yesterday. Don't do this, what I'm doing right now. I have no stops in, okay? I don't even have a mental stop. So anyway, we'll see if the ice cracks or I do. I, I'm not sure if we have a complete session on balance volume guy. That's you, Neil. That's the work you do, OBV. Corn, wheat, and cotton. Uh, maybe Steve will do that for you. So Blake, uh, pre-holiday, uh, 
watching paint dry and Euro again and uh, yeah. and the again just won't give up the ghost yet. Um, and I'm really surprised that the end is holding up. Now it's uh, decided to hook its ladder to S and P's, but you know, TLT looks pretty good. So yields. This would normally be this kind of action put pressure on U.S. dollar yen. So this correlation uh, hasn't worked for a week or so. so yeah, you know the, the dollar the... wagon to the market now. Yeah, the dollar yen continues to grind higher with uh, with equities, and um, I mean it's just you know it's playing a little bit of catch up, and you know I so I guess what's you know uh, the, well the, first of all let's let me just say there is a comment from Dark Star which I, I'm gonna have to I'll, I'll read because um, let me get to it really quick. He goes, uh, the grind higher is frustrating. Can't go long for fear of a top. Can't go short for fear of continuing move higher. And that's exactly the sentiment of, yeah. I would say, most of the market. You know, yesterday uh, I was looking at this. Um, you, you can see this is the Aussie yen. And yeah. uh, I actually played it long yesterday. I bought it at 74.02. I think I sold it at 74.05 last night and bought the New Zealand yen, very similar situation because it broke above 70. I'm like, oh, you know, here's the bullish wedge. I, you know, I bought yeah. it at 70 nice. 10. Yeah, well, I mean, I bought it at 70. No, I'm sorry, 70.05 uh, when we closed above there yesterday, above the 70. And then I sold it last night at like 70, I don't know, 12 or 15 or something. No, it's sure been taking its time with a 100 handle rally in the S&Ps. Well, that's the, you know, that's the point that, you know, you, 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 in FX, I mean, we look for, you know, correlations and the FX market is just, it's dead. I actually had to drive to, um, I had to drive to, um, uh, a, about an hour away to pick up these pies. All right. And I know it sounds crazy, but it's like the best pies in Arizona. Yeah. Where is that again? Rock Springs. Um, which is oh, okay. it's halfway to Prescott uh, okay. from Phoenix, and it's a, it's an hour trip from here. We go to Julian for their pies. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's like you, that, right? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. It, it, it. I mean, they're 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 big pies. They're it's like twenty five bucks. They're expensive. It's not <laughs> it's not cheap, but I mean, it's it's a treat. You know, it's right. I, I could go to Costco and you know for pecan pie and spend ten dollars, but instead I bought you know a twenty five dollar pecan pie. But it, it's it's not it's more of the it's a treat for our family type of thing, and we try to do it annually. And anyway, I went up. I, that's better than me. I shoplift the pies. <laughs> yeah, you were just walking and started walking out with pies. I paid for these. Anyway, um, I went with a a, a, a neighbor and um, him and I we we ran up there together, picked up some pies. He was picking. He had a bunch of family coming in from California. So, uh, you know, we were just talking about, and I was venting to him, you know, my frustrations in the market. And it's, it's, uh, you know, cause he's like, Oh, you know how things going. And I'm just like, you know, I was just trying to explain to him the basic concept of, you know, stocks continue to grind higher, but the FX market is just paralyzed. And we are, we are just stuck in limbo because the FX market has come to a realization that, the, the correlations aren't working. So, uh, you know, again, you look at the, you look at the Aussie N and I'm like, man, okay. S and P's are breaking above, you know, yeah. this, this oh, resistance and, yeah. you know, and, and that channel resistance that we, we had, I'm like, you know, we're just accelerating higher. So the Aussie N's got to play, play ball. And, you know, here I, here I go walking away with like four or five pips and I'm like, yeah. And, and I have the same thought process as dark star, his comment was, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to take my few pips off the market out of the market here and just walk away because, you know, we have like daily sentiment index on, 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 on VIX is at 10, you know, uh, S and P is only at 85. So it could, it could stretch even further, but it's like, you know, how about if, if things fall apart, I mean, my stops were, you know, let, let, let me just, uh, th this goes along with, you know, Forex analytics and like the, the analysis that you'll see here on, um, on the Aussie N. Uh, and this is, this is basically my thought process from yesterday, you know, 
a breakout is looming. Um, the Aussie N is approaching the triangle resistance, which could lead to a break higher with stocks moving higher. Um, the risk reward is well defined, and it is. Um, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I, I had my stops below 7360. Uh, so my stops were down here. Okay. So let me just, you know, illustrate that. My stops were down here, and my entry was basically here. Let's just say that. And I was looking for maybe a move back up towards, you know, you know, up here and, and everything's, everything is fine. I mean, patience to me in this market it has to be, you know, it's, it's critical, but at the same time, I was like, do I really want the risk overnight after the market has stretched so, so far? And, and that's last night. I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to sleep. And I, and I just pulled it off the table and, uh, took some profits and so and little profits I'm, I'm i'm talking basically just taking the trade off the table um but it, it is very frustrating because the mar the fx market is paralyzed because no one wants to no one wants to bet big money on anything in the fx market with all the uncertainties there's there's gamma all around there's options expiring everywhere in the euro all the way from 109 to 111 uh 112 there's you know the dollar yen's boxed into this 109 area everything from you know 10850 to 110 there's options expiring everywhere so basically the market is just it's stuck and we need we need something to to dislodge the market you know some some sort of volatility and uh some sort of announcement and, and really all we have to look forward to right now is a China U S trade deal. And, um, you know, that if you, if you assume that the mar that, that a deal is going to get done, then you have to be selling yen and just hoping for the best, uh, you know, and, and, and hoping that, you know, you get a rally in risk. The flip side is, is if, it, you know, the, the probably the better, trade, which, you know, I'm trying so hard to exercise is just patience and, you know, sitting around and waiting for an announcement to get made. I was drawing yesterday, um, what I feel the S and P is doing right now. And, and I was just, I, I actually just drew this this morning for, for no other reason than I was just, you know, doing a little char work, but nothing exciting. I, I was drawing this for our, um, our viewers, not our viewers, I'm sorry, our traders yesterday on the S&P. And this is, this is the daily chart. So if I have to draw for you guys what I imagine is going to happen. Now, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a forecaster by any stretch of the means. I look at, I look at, you know, levels that I think are going to be significant and, you know, try to pivot from there. But we're in that, um, the stock market acceleration phase, we're in the FOMO phase, you know, like, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to miss out. Everybody wants to be long because everybody wants to, um, uh, you know, be, be in the trade as there's an announcement being made. Um, you know, the, the fear of missing out, I can't, you know, I, I, I can't um, uh, be outdone by the s and I've got to have money allocated, uh, you know, if I'm a fund, because I don't want, you know, I don't want redemptions coming in. If I'm sitting in cash and the s and is up, you know, uh, you know, 20 some odd percent for the year or whatever the, whatever the number is, you know, so there, there, there's, you know, this, this, you know, everybody's just, chasing the market at this point. And if I had to imagine we're in that acceleration phase of a potentially blow off top where, you know, and I was explaining, I've been explaining to you guys about the grind higher and the grind higher, what I think is going to happen here is going to continue. And then we spike into probably some sort of key fib and then reverse from there. That's what I think is going to happen. If I had to imagine what is going to happen is we're sitting on pins and needles waiting for an announcement. And then, you know, the grind hire continues an announcement is made. Um, you know, within a couple of days after that we peak and then we reverse. And, and you, I mean, that's my working base case right now. That doesn't mean that that's going to happen. I mean, 
China can pull the rug out from underneath us like today or, you know, whenever. And we could, we could be sitting here, everybody long, you know, waiting for this, waiting for this blow off top type of situation. And then China just pulls the rug and we just, you know, we drop, you know, straight down. And I think, you know, the risk of that happening is, I don't know, maybe, maybe, 20%. But if that happens, I mean, we could, we could have a 10% haircut in the S&P really fast as well. So, you know, it, it is, it, and, and for FX, for FX traders like us, it is extremely frustrating because the currency market is not responding to this. And that's the most, that's the, the most annoying thing because, you know, I sit here and I, you know, I trade the, like, you know, just for example, I trade the, the Aussie N um, like I did last night and you, you have this breakout in, you know, the, you have the breakout in the stock market and the, and here we are trading at all time highs overnight and the Aussie N can't rally. Why is that? I don't know. I mean, but it's, it's definitely frustrating because you would expect that, that a rally like that would, would, would take up risk currencies like the Aussie dollar or, 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 you know, the New Zealand dollar would be more aggressive to the upside where, you know, we are grinding higher. Um, so one, one of the other things I just want to talk about is we have this, you know, situation where, you know, the FX market is very unresponsive. Uh, we are also in the end of month. Um, there are, are, you know, banks are giving their end of month uh, rebalancing model portfolios and it suggests that there's some dollar selling coming now the dollar selling i would uh i would assume is going to be more against the euro and maybe some against the pound so we might see the euro you know press up towards 11050 as things progress i'm not trading the euro at the moment i mean we are finding you know support at 110 but i but just looking at the euro i wouldn't be looking at it expecting you know this this huge move to 111. Like I said, there's a lot of options expiring, um, a, you know, near current level. So the beta is just really high around here, um, and and so you just you know just want to be careful, being too aggressive uh, in this environment, despite what you might read as far as end of month rebalancing goes. Uh, one of the other things, and I'll let Stelios talk about it here in a minute is, you know, the cable the cables getting a little bit of a lift. Um, yesterday it was looking a little bleak as we were, you know, pushing towards 128. Uh, you know, here we are consolidating pretty tight. We have, we have some polls that are going to be released, which like I said, I'll let, I'll let Stelios talk about that here in a moment, but the pound, you know, I think the thing I worry most about the cable is that we have this, you know, pennant formation. But we really need to start breaking higher soon. Um, uh, you know, per, you know, the the I would think that we need to start rallying soon because we're extending this uh, pennant. You know, pretty pretty long as far as time goes. So uh, if there is going to be a breakout, like I said, you know, one thirty would be, you know, the trigger for me. I'm 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 just sitting here watching the cable thinking if we get above 130, I might be willing to play. Or I was also thinking if we drop down to 129.50, I'd be a buyer down here too, um, you know, closer to the 200 day moving average, or I'm sorry, 127.50 is what I meant to say. But somewhere down here, I'd be more willing to play it on the long side or knowing that it was breaking out, I'd be willing to play. But, you know, in the middle of this pennant, I'm just not willing to do anything. And why why stick my neck out uh, at this at this stage? Uh, one other thing that uh, there's there's some comments uh, this morning about uh, you know Fox Business uh, uh, put out a USMCA could pass by mid December. We could see an announcement as early as today. If that happens, we would see some Canadian and peso near term strength. One of the things about the Canadian is the dollar Canadian is right up against. Let me let me. Uh, let the charts populate here. So interesting. I know on TradingView, for me, uh, some days I hit a good server where data populates instantaneously. <laughs> some days I don't. It's not like I do anything different every day. It's just, you know, whatever I happen to log into, it's like I hit a set of like weak servers. I don't know. But the dollar Canadian, while we're below this 133.50, 
I don't think there's any reason to be long. If we get above 133.50, that's a different story. Now, since you know, if you're if you're if you're thinking, well, on a positive or a a positive announcement um, about USMCA passing, it should be Canadian dollar positive. Then you know maybe the, the the best trade right now is just short the dollar Canadian, you know, back down to 131 and just play inside of this range. Um, and that that might be a decent trade as well, especially if we're looking for some dollar weakness going into month end. Uh, I, again, I'm not trading it. I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of giving you some of my thoughts here, um, it, you know, as, as we see it. Uh, with that being said, uh, everything else is really quiet. Uh, at the moment, and um, maybe I can bring in Stelios and Steve and see if they have any comments regarding anything that I've been talking about. Morning. So, good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning Blake. Hey, how are you guys doing? Stelio. Good morning, Dale. I've been thinking this morning uh, along the line of Star Wars. Uh, we have U.S. Data Day. You know, help me, U.S. Data. You're my only hope. And really, I mean, it really is. I mean, that's 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 it, right? I mean, there's not a whole lot. Um, the, the, this is this is our our we have some preliminary GDP numbers coming out. We have um, uh, job jobless claims are going to be released early. Durable goods orders, um, yeah. I mean, so let's hope we get some movement here. Yeah, um, let's see. Uh, you did mention the UK, <laughs> so uh, just a very brief word. Today we get the um, the MR people from YouGov. MRP is the multi-level regression and post-stratification post for whatever that means. But uh, it's supposed to be the most accurate one. It, cor it correctly um, predicted the hung parliament in 2017 and also details like uh, Labour winning Kensington and Chelsea and, and seats like that. So everybody's waiting for that. And uh, you can be sure that whatever result that gives the market reaction will probably be exaggerated initially. Um, the pound is a little bit stronger today. I don't think there's a particular reason for it. It was a little bit weaker yesterday. It's just, um, uh, you know, just moving a little bit ahead of this uh, poll. So that's the, uh, the event of the day. Unfortunately for us, it's a bit late. So it's going to be uh, midnight, our local time, 10 p.m. UK time. I'm going to be fast asleep, but I'm going to... It is 10 p.m. UK time, right? Yes. yes so, yes. And, and, you know, uh, Amanda is in our chat room. She was trying to downplay the, the significance of this, but um, uh, because of the, you know, the, the scope of who they're, who, who, the, who they're pulling. But the flip side to that is, is this poll has been accurate in, 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 in reading... Um, uh, previous outcomes of, of events as well. So that that's why the market is really focused on it. And again, I, for the cable, I'm really not interested. <laughs> I wish I could say I was so interested in, in what's happening here, but I'm, I'm really not. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll still, we'll see if, we'll see if something um, develops out of that uh, as well. So uh, Steve, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Just exchanging cultural <laughs> opinions on Skype with uh, with Joe, as you say, because oh, the market. I'm not. I'm not watching. So yeah, I, I'm wondering how how you're not because there is nothing to watch in the market. <laughs> oh, because I'm sitting here looking at. Nothing. Yeah, so, uh, well, today is the day before Thanksgiving. So let's let's all just remember. Um, in the United States, we're observing the Thanksgiving holiday. Typically, Thanksgiving holidays can be, you know, pretty slow. I have on occasion seen volatility because, you know, we're the only country celebrating Thanksgiving. Uh, obviously, you know, nobody in Mexico or Greece or, you know, or China nope, is celebrating not Thanksgiving. not true. We were well, celebrating it in my school. No, the majority of people. And, and some people are still going to be around and they're still going to be, you know, events happening. So there could be some volatility, even though, you know, some of the biggest liquidity will be out. So therefore we have to, you know, I, I still pay attention to quotes, even through Thanksgiving, through tomorrow and Friday, even though we are technically not broadcasting, I will still be paying attention to the market. Um, you know, glancing at my phone every once in a while, I'll be adjusting. I'll, I'll sit down, uh, 
you know, over the course of the next couple of days, and I'll be adjusting, you know, uh, some of the support and resistance levels uh, on Forex analytics, because th these help notify me, not just you, but me too, if the market's moving, because if a support or resistance level gets breached, it, it automatically sends a, a message to my my phone come on um, blake we know you're yeah. gonna be eating pie uh, well i will be eating pie and i might all right i might have a whisker too but <laughs> i'm just <laughs> saying that, don't uh, get any pie on your phone or anything i will miss a quote i will not i've got but i am eating <laughs> bourbon whiskey pecan pie anyway but the the other the other thing is is also we'll be updating uh, sporadically over the course of the next couple of days if there should be some movement now I want to say that Friday we are not we do we do not have a scheduled uh, face webinar. However, if there is something that's moving, um, Stelios and Steve will you know uh, uh, light up Twitter and you know let everybody know that there is a there's a webinar that's going to be broadcasted. So just just you know follow Forex Analytics on Twitter if you guys don't already. Because um, you know, if there's if there's a link that's going out, it'll go out via Twitter, uh, really quick. So just letting you guys all know that uh, we. But for for those of you that are celebrating the Thanksgiving holiday, you know, let's be thankful that we're going to have a China U.S. trade deal soon, and let's be thankful that volatility should be following that soon, and let's all be thankful that we could sit here and participate in the markets, even when it's extremely slow. And I want to say I'm very thankful for my team here at Forex Analytics. You guys are all rock stars. And, um, and I want to thank all of you viewers, listeners that, um, you know, continue to listen in despite the uh, very slow market conditions that we've seen in the last few months, um, because it may be slow now, but it will not stay slow forever. And, you know, it's always uh, it's always darkest before dawn. So, you know, that is, that happy is very Thanksgiving, true. brother. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Good luck today, and good luck the next couple of days. And if I don't see you um, on the webinars or anything, I will be here on Monday. So, uh, you guys have a great one, and I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. Thank you all very much for being part of our family and our journey. So, appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, Blake. Thanks, Thank you, Blake. We have quite a lot of data still, right? Coming up. We do, yes. It's uh, we have core PC, which is the um, the Fed's uh, theoretically the favorite uh, um, inflation measure. Uh, durable goods, GDP, obviously, it's uh, expected to uh, just drop 0.1. Chicago PMI later, pending home sales. We have quite a bit of stuff, which is uh, good. Maybe it is going to bring some change to the markets. I doubt it, but uh, you know, you never know. Um, but otherwise, it's been, again, it's been a very quiet morning. We've had very little data-wise. Uh, um, you know, we had the Norway unemployment ticking up at really, you know, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9. Who cares? It's really the same thing. Um, and uh, it's, it's been like watching paint dry. It's uh, very frustrating, actually. Yeah, just the usual slow grind higher in... Uh... Uh, in, uh, Steve, could you get excited about shorting S and P's up here around this thirty-one and a half level? Getting excited? Can no. you? Ex uh, do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? I would have done it uh, when we got rejected from that area of resistance. If I saw follow through, but there was no follow through. So okay. I so if we get follow through today, what would that mean to you? Uh, like I want to uh, see uh, now that we've over now that we've over uh, we have an overthrow uh, the wedge. What I need to see is it, back inside. It is back inside and closing below thirty ninety. Okay, that, that was would, last week's lows. That yeah, that would get me interested okay. again. Thank you. I was I was interested last week if you know that stall that we had in that lovely confluence of resistances uh did oh there produce, was a couple of good short trades from up there last week did produce something you know uh yeah. more to talk about but unfortunately there, it was one day then the next day looked like it would be continuation but instead yeah. of that we paired back the losses quite fast and yeah. closed almost on friday yeah and yeah, that they was, got them all back in a day because i was yeah. working the short side last yeah week. That, that that for me was a Telltale sign that you know the market is not ready to move lower yet. Let's see. By the way, we have data like five seconds. Yes. 
five seconds. Yes. Let's have a look. Any second now? 3,200, yeah, DJ. GDP 2.1, so that beat Core PC, I don't see it yet. Oh, where is Core PC? Okay, so all data better, mostly GDP because the rest are, I mean, yeah, US durable goods actually. I mean, we had a forecast of minus 0.8, so that was a big bit with a positive 0.6. Um, Okay, so positive data. Let's see how the markets are uh, reacting to it. First uh, of all, by the way, by the way, Steve, um, revisions in durable goods were exactly the opposite, so one percent worse. So I think that was a non-event. That number. Yeah, it was. It was minus one point four percent. The revision. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Metals yeah, are a little bit. GDP is some, somewhat better. Um, yeah, nothing that will probably. We might see some dollar strengthening here. I mean, we do see uh, Europe pushing slightly lower, but uh, the market doesn't you, really- You know see. what happens first when US data is good? Metals get smashed, right? It's, it's the first move always. <laughs> yeah, usually, yes. Let's have a look at the metals uh, since you mentioned it. Uh, gold is lower in the day, silver is lower in the day, but as I was uh, explaining the other day, I think this is to be expected because I, if you look at the short-term charts in gold and silver, especially silver was uh, was the best indicator here. Um, you know, we we've had price action that has been like very corrective in nature. So although we did find support at an interesting level, um, the the type of rebound we've had uh, since, um, I think, you know, shows that there is a good chance that we're going to see. Uh, lower level. Same here with gold. Gold created that uh, pennant. It has broken lower. Um, I, I think we have a nice confluence here of supports roughly at 1433, 1435. I think that's doable actually. And I think that might prove to be a, a very nice actually buying opportunity. Um, I still view this whole move lower uh, as corrective. I think it has. Uh, truly corrective characteristics. I mean, it's slow. It, it has uh, many periods that price action is choppy and overlapping. Um, and it's very orderly, uh, especially in comparison to uh, the move that we had higher, which uh, in essence began uh, at the beginning of summer. So um, I, I do think that, you know, gold and silver might spend a little bit more time correcting and consolidating. But at the end of the day, uh, the path of least resistance, uh, in my opinion, remains to uh, the upside. Um, USD yen is once again trying to um, whoop, wrong chart uh, to push towards the inverted head and shoulders formation neckline, uh, which isn't far away. Um, but we're still like 20, 30 pips uh, away from that. Now, theoretically speaking, symmetry is still somewhat okay. So, um, you know, if we see a break above like 109.50, we might see a decent uh, extension uh, to the upside and it might do some catching up with uh, what stocks have been doing, which, as we saw before, the S&P is now trading uh, clearly above this ascending wedge. Uh, the same deal um, here with the NASDAQ. The IWM, as we mentioned the other day, um, yesterday it, it ended up unchanged on the day, but you know it was the second day in a row that it has now closed above the uh, long-term rect rectangle. And you know as long as we stay above it, extending to complete the target is definitely uh, a likely scenario. The DAX continues to um uh produce uh, a bull flag most likely i mean it's the same type of price action we've seen multiple times the fact that although it was overbought it has failed to really move lower and it's just consolidating um in a little bit in time uh probably indicates that we're going to have um another extension higher the same was uh, the case with the nikkei which is now breaking above the equivalent. We, we spoke about it last week. 
I saw this um, flag and we're, we're now breaking above it and that might also point to the USD yen making the move because we know there's a decent correlation between the USD yen and um, uh, the Nikkei for more than one reason. Um, Australian, and the reason I want to show Australian is because at some point I had, I had uh, also mentioned this because this is one of the most technical indices out there. It has been in a prolonged uptrend within this very, very pretty channel. I mean, it, it channels perfectly, almost perfectly. And the recent price action was clearly a triangle. We broke above it, we retested it a couple of times, and we're now pushing higher. So another uh, move towards the confluence of this channel and 161.8 uh, of the last big move lower at 7,000, which is also a very nice round number, looks like a likely scenario here as well. So in general, no matter, uh, almost no matter which stock index you look at, here is the FTSE. FTSE is somewhat underperforming, but that can be explained uh, in, uh, in part due to the recent uh, cable strength, which acts as a headwind, plus, you know, the usual uh, uncertainty um, surrounding Brexit, which, which has been a given anyhow for uh, quite some time. So, uh, you know, it's no wonder that with a combination of the two, the FTSE is um underperforming uh, but it might also explode higher following um an election result that will uh point to um you know some quick uh resolution of um, the whole situation so let's say if the Tories get like a good majority or whatever i think it should respond positively even though the pound is going to be climbing at the same time um as well by the way let me have a look at a few of your questions because it's not too many things somebody can talk about so you might have some ideas definitely looking to short at 3200 SP. yeah let's see let's get first gold dump yeah i mean that's to be expected in the short term i remain bearish the two medals i repeat in the short term right so don't misunderstand me i'm i'm still very very bullish in the medium to long term, but in the short term, they look like they want to go lower first. So there's no reason to fight that. Uh, yes, I did feel the earthquake. Actually, the earthquake was very far away. It was in in uh, uh, Albania. The island. the island. No, no, no. We're talking about we had an earthquake today. I was oh. in bed with my son. Uh, uh, it was here. There you go. And oh. Athens is there, and still we felt it quite strongly. It was a 6.0 uh, uh, magnitude um, earthquake. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, 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 we felt it. I mean, um, you know, he asked me, what is that? I told him it's an earthquake. Kitty. <laughs> no, that was, yeah, that was my kitty. Yes, one of uh, the two. Did she, did she warn you? They know before they come. Uh, she wasn't in the same room, so I I, I don't know. She was sleeping. Oh. Uh, she, she was sleeping in the in the it's bed. It's only dogs, room. isn't it? It's dogs that know, not cats. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. That's what I thought. I maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I think Speak, all like all animals. Of, speaking of which, Stelio, did Millie and Mike go berserk? I, I wasn't at home. I was at the gym, so I have no idea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> did you were you uh, benching three fifteen with it on your chest <laughs> for your last rep when the <laughs> <laughs> with no spotter? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Have you talked about Bitcoin? Uh, no, we haven't. But you know something? Uh, I haven't spoken about the cryptocurrencies for quite some time. So uh, it's not a bad idea to have a fast mention about them. And they have to tell you that, uh, you know, price action here in Bitcoin, um, you know, is not looking that good. I mean, initially that looked like a nice, potentially bullish triangle. But instead of breaking higher, you can see here the intermittent trend line. Steve, I, I don't like the action in the stock market compared to what the yen is doing and everything. I, and everyone, no one will do, no one wants to sell these things today. Just so, I'm just saying, look at it, we're leaving a little wick on a couple of the indices right here. So the yen rally to new highs and 
the indexes did not on that GDP news. What do they want? I don't know if they believe foolishly, but I don't think that's the case. Uh, I don't I don't know if they believe foolishly that perhaps somewhat better data is going to change the monetary policy approach from the Fed, because as I was explaining yesterday, and I I mean, I would be willing to bet a lot of money on that. The Fed from this point on has only two possible paths. One is staying put for, you know, some time uh, Two. Uh, getting yeah, even, I, I was just talking about today's action. Getting even more accommodative. So far, thank you. So, so far, coach. I mean, we haven't seen. Well, go <laughs> go to like uh, I don't know. Tell me which go which go one? to a one minute chart. You'll see how. Oh, far to I, a one minute chart. No, yeah, I'm kidding you. Yeah, I, I'm I know. Kidding. I know. I know you're kidding. You. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't go in a one minute. I remember, you know, this, this do a tick really... chart. Tick chart. <laughs> oh, I, I did that. Yeah, I remember, you traded I, off no, the tick. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you the first like week I started yeah. trading, I was yeah. looking also at tick charts, but that was like 15 years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was looking at tick charts, and you know, after a week, I was like exhausted. Uh, no, I was like, <laughs> oh my god, this is just completely worthless you know <laughs> <laughs> well you're it's your fortune it only took you a week to find that out yeah that's you know, quick <laughs> all right buddy go ahead um so yeah uh, having to do with cryptocurrencies now yeah um first of all ethereum is back testing this descending wedge so let me be very clear the price action, especially in Ethereum, is not bullish in any case. But if you like it to the upside, this nice confluence of supports gives you an excellent risk-reward ratio. You have to consider, though, that the RSI is showing oversold, which you know is a signal that yes, we might have a short-term rebound, but it is a signal that you know there is no uh, you know no bullish momentum here. Quite the opposite. Uh, Bitcoin is also moving quite lower, uh, faked out. I bet a lot of people when we had that triangle, because usually triangles are continuation formations. So I, I bet a lot of people started buying it off this triangle's support after it tested it like for a couple of times. And then it just puked lower. Uh, then it faked people once again, because this was clearly, uh, you know, in usual charts, it would have been clearly a continuation formation. It broke lower like for a day, then it like exploded higher. So, you know, many people thought, okay, that was it. And then once again, we started dripping lower initially only to accelerate. So I have to tell you that reading the price action here in Bitcoin is not easy to do. So you, you, you probably are better by looking at the bigger picture because the short term moves are so volatile that, you know, you can't trust so much, you know, the formations that you see. Um, I'm looking at this larger descending channel and we can easily move lower towards like five, five and a half thousand um, to retest that before moving higher. I really see nothing bullish here. We're now back testing previous support as resistance and we seem to be stalling. The RSI has also already broken below this trend line uh, support. So I, I mean, you know, I think it's a very dangerous proposition being bullish here. I, I don't see anything yet. Of course, we've seen time and time again that crazy stuff can happen to Bitcoin. You can see like a 40% move higher, like within like a few days. Uh, that is why I'm, I, I, I'm not even considering trading. I've only traded like uh, once cryptocurrencies. It was some time ago, if you remember, Coach. Um, you know, we were talking about it on on, on the webinar as well. Um, in general, you know, I, I prefer to trade other, other things because I think there is a lot of forces in play in cryptocurrencies that, you know, it's not even easy to understand or... Uh, yeah, we liked, we liked them in uh, February. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, specifically... Uh, you were in specific Ethereum and yes. I bought GBTC. Ex exactly. Specifically, yeah. I, I was long Ethereum and that worked uh, worked out nicely. This is the only time I've actually traded uh, cryptocurrencies. 
How uh, many people besides you and me, Steve, remember you were long Ethereum? Who knows? No um, one. I know. <laughs> DJ says McAfee might have to eat his appendage. <laughs> After all, if Bitcoin doesn't hit one million handle, yeah, he has. Oh, if gosh. I remember right, he has said that he's going to eat his uh, penis. Let me be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me be politically correct with that. If it doesn't reach one million by the end, I think of was it this year? DJ? I don't know how he's going to do that. He was castrated in Belize before he escaped. <laughs> so uh, you know, I don't. I think that's a false perhaps, representation perhaps, perhaps, of. Perhaps uh, he he has kept it in 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 a jar or something. Right? I I know, but before he got out of that country, I'm sure they took care of that for him. Uh, my, Remember my when he was on the run? So, uh, you know, I've interviewed McAfee. Okay, DJ? City? So City? just keep, yeah. When? At FX Street. Oh. So just keep in mind, at that time, he was, you know, going to be a contender for the Libertarian Party in 2016. And, you know, uh, he wasn't even talking crypto. He was talking about um uh, power grid failures, et cetera. And I'm just saying, consider the source. He's a bright guy, but he's a character. No, he's, he, he's not a bright guy. He's, he's a, a character. Bri he's a brilliant guy. He's, yeah. he's what we call a uh, brilliant lunatic, more or less. That's what he yeah. is. Yeah, so yeah. I, you know, I could relate to him. Anyway, he's smoking <laughs> on camera. We would do it on camera. And, you know, he's smoking there on camera. Yeah, I want to be president. <laughs> anyway. You know, he, he has actually he has actually mentioned in the past, which is quite interesting, that he's the only person that he's probably the only person on uh, the uh, on the on the planet that he yeah. could run uh, both for um, U.S. president and uh, U.K. prime minister because he's from U.S. Uh, like he's from U.S. descended, but he was born in a U.K. Oh. Um, military base or something like that. So, you know, he was mentioning that I can run in both countries. You know, so yeah. <laughs> he has some thoughts like that. <laughs> yeah, that's see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I rest my case. So anyway, what McAfee says, take it with a grain. That's all. With a lot of grain, actually. Yeah. <laughs> At least a grain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he yeah. plays a left-handed piano. Oh, he's a lefty too, like me. Oh. Yeah, on, on oh, that. Okay. So, do you want to look at grains, uh, Matt? You, you know, we there's not much no happening in problem FX. problem whatsoever. And we also had questions prior to that. And I'm going to look at grains. Just and you have thinking, about 13 minutes because uh, Saeed is here. Could you check corn, wheat, cotton? Yeah. Okay, so we have a lot of people that want commodities. Uh, commodities. Okay, I'm not in general looking at them, but I'll gladly do it with you. Well, you sure consume plenty of them. Oh no! Question oh no! You've it. lost weight. That's right. You stopped consuming. Uh, just, just, just don't even. <laughs> I, I, I made up for it. I, yeah, I, I I'm lost, at a new high at two thirty. Seven the kilograms yesterday. in one month. If you guys try this. Well, I know where they went. You. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, corn, wheat, and all the rest. Let's have a look. If somebody asked for nut gas as well. Let's start by that. Okay. Natural gas uh, finding support here at the 50 and 200 DMA. Um, I'm a little bit troubled by the fact that we had a perfect rebound in three waves, like ABC. You can see uh, a quality target up there. So we got perfectly rejected from there. Um, so I have to say that, okay, we're sitting exactly on, on top of the 50 and 200 DMA, but if we bridge through them, I think we might even see lower prices in natural gas. So be careful here. I, I drew back then that we should pull back and this support area should let us know if that was a corrective move that's already over or not. But since, you know, the 50 and 200 DMA, are, you know, exactly just below, I think, you know, we should extend, um, you know, support to this area to like 248. Now, below 248, I, I think we're moving uh, lower. Now, having to do with corn, okay, let's see. Uh, is, is this actually uh, is this actually an accurate depiction of corn? Uh, commodity trust corn 
no probably right uh, no that's the etf no future okay uh, oh we have a cfd and here are the futures okay continuous contract there we go there we go oh, we we have actually had uh this chart okay so we had a look at this chart like a long time ago and i said that uh listen we might see since this is a triangle we might see one more push lower before we head higher anyhow it's a triangle i mean whichever uh, side it broke you had to respect it we got the exact opposite so we didn't get continuation as you see uh we did um we did get um a break higher but that was short-lived and we're now again more or less we rebounded again from the same trend line right so so far i have to say that this fake break higher is is somewhat troubling um but we're back in consolidation right so perhaps we're going to get that scenario just later on i mean perhaps we're going to get this scenario uh now that a lot of people probably that were uh, short are out of the market we might eventually see corn pushing to lower lows before uh higher because i do believe i do believe for various reasons that if we get one more leg to the downside uh it might be terminal and then we might see quite a nice um rebound from there rsi as you see is also mid-range which is another testament that there is no current um uh there's no current trend here at the moment okay um so corn wheat uh was the other one okay uh question cotton okay let's have a look at cotton as well let's see cotton 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 futures okay there it is so obviously uh you know we topped out in 2011 there we, we've had like a major bearish uh move since then um we're now seeing a rebound but the question is what kind of a rebound is this and the answer is doesn't look impulsive to me so i would be watching this channel here uh this is also an interesting horizontal resistance area more or less there you go 200 dma just above as well so be careful here with um uh with cotton because i think it might not have much more to run to the upside um before it rolls over again so 200 daily moving average this zone uh the rebound so far is channeled even rsi for the time being seems to be diverging we had a higher high but the other side didn't produce something equivalent uh given the prior move which is lower let's see there you go triple confluence of resistance right there at 67 50 let's say so 67 50 key level for the trend uh as long as we trade below it uh i think uh you know staying uh, short makes sense 100 percent above 6750 uh we can extend because this is a very nice triple confluence of resistance so that's what i think about cotton um let's see what what else wheat we have a cfd we also have the futures okay wait quite a nice move lower but resembles more as you see the triangle right can end up being uh accumulation it can yeah that looks uh, the best of all the grains yeah it can end up being accumulation but from a risk reward perspective against this trend line yeah. uh it, it would make sense to try to be on the short side now if we break that one then i would be watching for this one so i i think that if we extend above there 
then we can see a rebound extending towards that trend line. So there's going to be quite a nice, uh, we, we're going to have quite a nice um, uh, room to move to the upside uh, if we make it through that first trend line, um, making it to the second. I believe it's going to take a much more um, uh, an aggressive turn in the dollar to turn the grains. I think that's going to be part oh, that's, of the equation. That's definitely going to going to help a lot. There's no question yeah. about it. I mean, every, everything that is that is USD, uh, right? Uh, nominal gains. And... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so. Uh, natural. But gas, China has been import. like the big of all the grains. Uh, uh, imported by China, they've been stockpiling wheat for, you know, during this whole formation. Uh, Angie Setzer, uh, who covers the grains, uh, talked about it a year or so ago. I mean, they've been really stockpiling wheat. And actually, they have a problem with their agriculture right now. It's called an army worm. Uh, I was going to ask Blake if he knew about it, but he was a, he's a, he was a Marine. But it's not only the hog population that has been decimated, but now they're having trouble with their grain crop because of this pest. Mm, so that's actually uh, very interesting. Yeah, it's called uh, it's called an army worm. So Google it, and uh, uh, you don't use them for fishing. They they like grain. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> um, I think the only question I haven't answered is the one about uh... coffee. Oh, we had a. We had a question about coffee. Yeah, I heard it broke when you gave it up. Yeah, a week coffee. Or so. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, no, I, it declined because yeah, of your, you know. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, consumption. This was, this was a horrific experience. I had due to, gas, to gastritis. I had to cut coffee cold turkey. Needless oh to say that you must that have had headache, migraines every day. The, the withdrawal symptoms were horrific. I mean, I, I felt fatigued all, all day long for the first two, three days. But most importantly, I had like for 10, 11, 12 days, something like that. I had like every second day, like horrible migraines, and, yeah. uh, headaches. But, you know, after, after like 10 days, symptoms uh, started receding and I'm absolutely fine. Although I miss it as a taste. I mean, I, I, I like coffee. I like coffee as a drink, so I do miss it. Um, well, it was a good warm up for you uh, for when you kick heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that goes, bro. Pro probably I'm I'm one of the very few people in my generation. I'm almost forty now that I have tried no illegal nar narcotics ever. Not, not oh not my ever god! Ever. Oh, you got to come visit me in California. We'll go. Yeah, there. I I mean I I never felt the. You know, the need well, or, you know, I wasn't uh, even well, curious about it. Okay. You and, still have to, <laughs> you and, still have to come out and get and, curious. And one of the, and the, <laughs> the last of the three times I was drunk, it was in 1997. <laughs> oh, see, look, look, army worms are a problem in Texas too. Yeah, they're, yeah. Okay. So uh, to answer those two questions. Oh, yeah. What's happening here with uh, uh, with crude? Nothing has changed. It's clearly not easy for it to climb higher. We remain within this within this channel. We remain within the bigger triangle. Uh, I think there is a good chance that it's going to fail either from here or from a little bit higher. So um, you know, if I had to do something with it at the moment, I would prefer to be short than anything else. And coffee. Let's have a look at it. Uh, let's see if it responded. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Steve, do you know how you could tell whether or not these army worms are Italian army worms? No. They raise their hands up and surrender. <laughs> <laughs> I made okay. it up, man. I hope I didn't uh, okay. offend uh, any of our Italian. <laughs> listen, to be macho, very honest. man. Huh? Coffee, coffee is by far here the more the most interesting of all. Yeah, okay. Commodities. We had a look at this. Look at that. This is a legitimate See? break. It's not 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 only a legitimate break because look how broke... go back to twenty what twenty fifteen twenty fourteen. Wow. So September twenty fourteen, we broke that trend line, and not only we did break above it, but we confirmed its importance 
by coming down and retesting and look at the nature of this move higher. Yeah. So I have to tell you, coffee looks very, yeah. very appealing. To That's the not decaf. <laughs> you know that decaf has caffeine as well, right? You do. Know I that. sure I know. Yeah, it I know depends, about, I, huh? depends on depends on the method of uh, yeah. uh, taking the coffee out. It might have something between like one to five percent of the regular amount of coffee. Okay. Do you want to show any gold coins before we continue to the interview? You know something, like you, you did earlier me, in the week, huh? If if you remind me, if you remind mm. me tomorrow before the webinar, I'm actually going to show you live on camera a real one. You're going to be doing the whole webinar tomorrow. Oh yeah, there's no webinar tomorrow. Yes. Oh well, you know. Anyway, yeah. You, but okay. as as we so said, I we can't might remind have, you. <laughs> yeah, we might have indeed. We might have though on Friday, depending yeah. on what kind of price action we're gonna uh, have. Um, if we are to have, uh, you're gonna receive a reminder email. So I'm gonna make sure to. I still haven't cancelled Friday's uh, webinar. Uh, I'm gonna cancel it if there is nothing to talk about. Uh, if you do receive a reminder email, it means that we're going to do the Friday webinar. Okay. So if you think Steve goes through withdrawals, giving up coffee, wait till he has to give up talking for a few days. So uh, <laughs> thank you, bro. And I know you don't celebrate it, but um, I think every day should be Thanksgiving. Man. As long as long as we're healthy uh, yeah. and the right. same applies to our families. Yeah, I think, yes, I agree with you. We're working, we're indoors, we have food on our table. So uh, I'm thankful I got to know you over the last two and a half, three years, Steve. The, the feelings are mutual, you know that. All right, buddy. So uh, I'm look, I, I, without Forex Analytics, I never would have met Saeed Zayman. So Saeed, you're on deck, buddy. Let's see. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, to everybody. Thank you, Steve. I hear decaf does not have the cancer preventing properties of normal coffee. That is true. Uh, it has been proven that coffee has cancer preventing properties. But you know, as, as in everything in life, you should do that in moderation. So ideally, you know, one maximum two coffees per day and depends on the coffee. I mean, if you go to Starbucks, because I know that especially you Americans like to oversize everything. If you go to like a Starbucks and buy like the, you know, the huge container, that has enough coffee in for a whole day. So if, if when, when I'm saying like two coffees per day, I'm talking about like a single dose cappuccino coffees, not about like super sized uh, half a liter <laughs> cups of coffee, because you know, that's probably the maximum doses you can get in a whole day yeah. plus. Go have a cup. And uh, Zaid, Hello. Can, you, can you hear me brother? Yep, I can hear you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, and uh, uh, can you share your screen? It says I cannot. Sh oh, yeah, no, you can I now. Can and maybe turn your volume up a little bit. Is my audio low? Sure a little bit, yeah, brother. I'm not sure how to change it, to be honest with Okay, you. well, then just uh, talk, it, it, yell at me. Okay, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's okay. Okay, okay. Um, what chart can you see? Uh, right now, you have the end up there, four hour. Yeah, so. Uh, so, what, uh, thank you for coming back, bro. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me on again. Yeah, and uh, what a great way to wrap up a holiday week because uh, when you come in, you uh, bring us crystallized views. Appreciate all you've done over the course of time that you've become like a regular in our community. So I remember last time we were talking, you were avoiding US dollar pairs and trading other pairs because the dollar wasn't clear to you. Uh, yeah. Looks like... Uh, you're back in. You're back into looking at dollar pairs again. Huh? Well, to be honest, with you, not much has changed. I mean, I've had a few plans this week. So yeah. one trade I've taken, which which was a loss. Um, still difficult environment for me at the moment. But um, let's start off with the yeah, dollar yen. So bigger picture view. Uh, say so clean dollar yen chart up. I do have a you know macro uh, bigger bullish dollar yen view. But at the moment, you know, across the market, it's been so shy. It's just been it's been difficult to trade. Uh, I've had a few plans. None of them are triggering. So been the sidelines a lot. I've been making the most of crypto lately. Yeah, I but knew I you were going to say that because at least there you have some reflective moves every once in a while. Yeah. And that the, pay. The pay big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah okay. So I'll go in my dollar in view. I'll break it down what I've got. So 
going with dollar yen, I mean, I started off with a bearish bias. Um, I was looking for downside, okay? And bigger picture remains uh, bullish, but short-term downside, I thought we'd get some risk off. I think we may get some sell-off now. I'm looking at the SPX. Yeah, so, I, I think today may mark a short-term high for a five to 7% correction. So, yeah, but yeah, you know, I've been, I've cried wolf before. Not too, not too much to ask for, is it? Five no. Not at all. <laughs> could happen no. in a few. It could happen in a week. Could do. So, yeah. looking at this, I've got a pivot zone here. So, if we look at the dollar, we're trading within this leg here, and this is more short-term view. So, what I did was I marked at the midpoint, and if it was to get below here, I'd get bearish, and I'll at least play it towards this key level here, which I, which is our range low. It hasn't been happening. It's just been pushing up and up and up. Right. So at right. this point, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I have to switch my bias. So at what point do I switch my bias? And when I say switch my bias, it's going to be short term still. I still don't have the balls to um, play some swing trades just yet until we get the new month. Plus, it's month end. Um, you know, price action is a bit choppy. So for me, it depends on last week's high right now. So we could still go down. At what point would I, with the probability of the trade increase for me to go down, it'd have to be below the 90 level. If it breaks 108.90 and holds below it, I'm happy to take the short. At that point, my target one will be here. Again, in this environment, I'm going to have to play level to level until it's proven otherwise. So a short-term day trade could evolve into a swing trade. So, you okay. know, some may say, well, you missed the high. Well, that's fine. The probability for me isn't high there. The probability for me is high there. And I'm all, all I'm concerned about is where is the high probability for the short. You want confirmations. You don't yes. want, you know, I, I, I agree with you. And I still fall into that where you want to get the edge. But you haven't had the signal yet. Exactly. So if it was to break below here and I've got the SPX breaking down and I've got the gold bottoming out, then below here is the high probability play for me. And if okay. it was to break this, then I'm happy to add here. So say I had a small position here, I can yeah. add below here. And if we switch that across, it's the mid range, you can see how pivotal it is across yeah. it. So from there, my next level is going to be there. Now, if we smash below here, and that's when my probability for the swing trades increase and I'll play it down to here. So I'm still holding uh, out for this trade. It's just difficult to take a long here. I mean, the way it's moving up, it's just, it's nothing high probability for me. So again, not much to go with, but it is where it is. If it follows my plan, I'll take it. If it doesn't, forget it. The other pair I've got is Euro USD. Okay. And now I'm going to break down Euro USD in a bit of detail. So if I go to the quarterly chart for the Euro USD, and I think we spoke about this last time, I'm looking at this quarterly uh, range. That's the range low. That's the range high. I'm mean, right at the midpoint. So it could anything could happen here. Now, I've got a clear plan for this where if we look on the daily, we had a retest of that mid-range already, rallied, we deviated it, got back above it, held, rallied. Now, when it was around here, I was looking for higher prices, but the confirmation would, for that would have come if it broke the 90 level here. It did, a, And as you can see, that's a pivotal level here, the 90. So clean break above that. I'm looking for bullishness towards here to take out these highs here. Now, if it breaks below the mid-range here, then I think we've got massive downside. Because if we look on the weekly, I think that point, if it's going to go lower, if it's going to go higher, it should not break this low. But if it breaks back below it again, then I think we play all the way to here. So I think it's a make or break point for Euro USD. Interesting. Now, go, now going back to that, now that's still a little while away. So I'm happy yeah. to wait for like a weekly close before I step in. Um, but I've got a short term range for Euro USD, which is uh, here. Um, and that short term range is, if you look, that's the high, that's the low, and this is the midpoint. It's pivotal, support, rally, support, rally. So now, if it breaks this now, then I'm happy to play it from there to there to take out these lows, which is the midpoint between this and that. If that breaks, then here. Now, if that breaks, then that day trade could evolve into a swing trade because it breaks that quarterly mid-range for us. So at that point, I'm happy to step in and short the market um, swing trades. I okay, look swing the trades under 108.80 ballpark? Yeah, around there. That's right. Okay. Thank so yeah, you. that's what I'm looking for. And okay. looking at the weeklies, I mean, it's not looking too great. So yeah. So again, it's just planning stage for me. I mean, I'm happy to. Sit you know, down. I it's interesting. Uh, I was talking about too many retests here at 110 support, giving people too many opportunities to buy the same level. Do you ever feel that way, or you just give it the benefit of the doubt, even if it does it no, 20 many, times? No, it's too many. Uh, um, it's weak for me. And looking at this, a bigger picture, I am bearish this bigger picture. The only lungs I'm playing, I'm taking that as counter trend. I mean, yeah. the, my biggest bearish picture came was when we broke out of this range, why yeah. could we hold here? So the quarterly yeah. is like the macro view still remains bearish. Nothing's changed with that. It's okay. only if it gets back above here, then I get macro bullish. Back Any above 114 I'm, you need. 
1460. Yeah, around 14, 1460. Okay. But any lungs I'm taking is still considered counter trend, in my opinion. So right. now the things are sh shifting. So here, I was looking for lungs around here. Now things are shifting. It looks like the macro trend could continue. But again, break below here would confirm it and then we'll ride it lower. Um, so that's that. Okay. Another pair, yeah. So if you can break this cleanly, retest it, I'm happy to wait till next week if that unfolds. But um, it may unfold today, actually. See how we close. If we close bearish today, any retest. So uh, a scenario I'll be looking for possibly tomorrow um, would be, because usually if you're in sync with the trend, I mean, it's quite aggressive. But if we move my pen tool, see the Zoom, the Zoom, I so prefer when you guys used to use the go to meeting. You like that better? It's, uh, just for the pen tool. But yeah, oh, and break oh. of retest and <laughs> break down below here, then I can short it towards the end oh, there. Okay. So the next big one is gold. Now, bigger picture view, I am bearish gold, uh, but I'll be looking for counter trend lungs. Now, where's my gold chart? And I think it could trigger for me either today or tomorrow. So bigger picture, I think we go down to uh, the 1380s. Looking at the weekly, I mean, we've had no clean choice. Here. Let's go to get a clean gold chart. So on the monthly, right? I mean, big. I mean, I'm bullish if it comes in today, but even in a broken out of a huge range here, yeah, we can see this right. clear cut to everybody. Yeah. But within that, can get re, uh, um, correction. And looking across the market with the dollar strength, the thing that happens now, especially with the risk on happening. So I'm looking for a move down into here. So I'm happy with 1400 to 14 uh, to 141380. Now, if we look, I was looking for a pullback into around here. We didn't get that, but it did touch the minimal, uh, which yeah. was here actually. Well, one of these lows anyway. Right. So the marquee level going forward is the 1450 level. And if we look, okay, it's this range, uh, 1450 is here. Yeah. It's this range here. So that's resistance, resistance broken out, support there. So if you cleanly breaks below here, then that takes us back within this old range here. So this all, all this becomes a deviation, which means we should easily drop to here. So the moment the 1450 can break, I'm waiting for, you know, let it hold. If you can continue breaking down, then I'm happy to short it and it'll be a swing trade. So for me, I'm on the sidelines until it breaks that. Um, so yeah, so nothing clear cut right now other than just planning stage, which is frustrating. And before I just used to go, even before you confirm, I see it chopped up like that, but now we were disciplined. Um, oil though, oil, I think it goes higher. Um, I'm going to go to a quarterly chart for oil, bigger picture oil. Uh, it's another one on my radar. Let's go to a new oil chart. So this is a quarterly chart we spoke about before yeah. as well. And if you look at the quarterly, at this point, I wasn't sure, but now it looks like, you know, it wants to push higher. So I reckon this high here, so when it bounces, that's a key resistance. And if we look at that level here, we couldn't close above it. But look at the turn point. It's a quarterly. We still got over a month left. I think we pushed towards um, uh, 60.7. And if and then the 62.55, so macro view on bullish oil unless we break below them open. So having said that, let's break this down further into a lower time frame. And I've got a little range drawn out here, which is um, range low, range high, and then the mid range. Yeah. Now, if we look, okay, we had a we were consolidating here for a while, and then we broke, faked out, and then got back up of a city. I think as long as this low holds, we're pushing towards here. So okay. I'm looking for a trade entry now. So my trade entry trigger will come in the form. I think it's, it's ready now. As long as, you know, so we've got that high that caused the low. Resistance, resistance, found support. is is yeah. stuff is holding. I think as long as we hold here, I think it's a decent long here. I'm going to actually take that myself now. But yeah, I think it's a decent long here as long as we don't come back below here. Because if we come back below here, then that becomes a deviation. So I think it's a decent long. I probably put a hard stop there, but if it, was to swing, if it wasn't to swing for this, I'd cut it. I'm going for about 68, call it about 60, 50, 60, 80. So yeah, okay. decent reward here. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. Um, that's about it, really. Any uh, view on Bitcoin? Yeah, I think that's everybody's tuning in for Bitcoin, really. So, yeah, let's go with Bitcoin. So, apart from, um, so Bitcoin, uh, let's get a clean chart. So, with Bitcoin, um, I do believe bigger picture, we push lower. Okay. And the range I'm using is a bigger time frame range, which we used last time. Low of the year, high of the year, midpoint for the year. And this is the midpoint between the mid, mid range and range low. So, I believe this is the next bigger picture downside target. And if that breaks, then probably here. Yeah. I want to say, oh, wait, I think all these yeah. drops are relative. You know, people yeah. get excited about these, but this is unnatural, you know, percentage wise. So, why right. should, you know, uh, a downside move is relative? There's another Bitcoin chart I'm looking at. And if you look at it, bigger picture, I don't think anything's changed. It's just 
sometimes you just got to step back. But I think in the crypto community, they're not really used to how traditional markets work. So it's mainly people that just... Not a bad candle we're getting in here. I mean, he, if this is just short term still. Yeah. I mean, he has a range band, really. This is the range, the top, the right. top and bottom bands. So unless this cleanly breaks, then we can start panicking. Yeah. But again, with Bitcoin, even if you went to 2K, it'll do 20K within a year, like it did before. So what am okay. I looking for short term? So my short term plan was when it broke, um, this, this is my range low. And that's my mm -hmm. range high. So I, I took a long, small size long here. And as soon as it got back above previous days low, I took a, um, added more to it. So as as the probability of the trade increases, so when I took a long here, my validation would have had to be in here because it could still pull lower and still be valid. So I've got to put my stop where I'm wrong, not where I want a tight entry. So having said that, um, what am I looking for next? Until it breaks out of this range, it's still range bound. But I believe short term, I'm looking for a pullback uh, towards here, at least. That would be where I'm wrong, because if it breaks that now, most likely we're going to head towards here. So one way of doing it is, uh, I can use a pen tool here, I think. One scenario I'm looking for is a pullback there. And if you can give me the confirmation, I take a long there, stop, risk there, still aim for there. But because it's tapped a few times, probability was it should break out. And that's my target. Why am I targeting yeah. there? Is because if we go back, okay, it's based on this old consolidation here. This yeah. was the consolidation. Then we had, I treat this as an anomaly. I treat this as an anomaly. Mm -hmm. So if this was, if this wasn't there, what would I be looking for? Breakdown, retest, sell off. So I treat that as an anomaly. So I'm looking for a retest there. If it breaks down from there, then I'm happy to continue the swing short all the way back down towards here. What if a tricky it, business. Anomalies and uh, what was the word you were using before uh, when a market went uh, above a, in an area and didn't stick? What you were Deviation. Saying, yeah, deviation, anomalies. What a business of uncertainty, isn't it? <laughs> it is it's all great. There's no certainties. If, yeah. this, if, then, if this happens, then I do this. Yeah. And then it's just... That is just probabilities, what I'm going to look for to increase the probability of the trade. So thing is, what if it falls from here? So, okay, so I'm happy to look for a long there. That's my validation level. If it cleanly breaks above here, then the probability of that long towards here increases so I can trade it here. So if I don't have the bulls to take it here or the probability for me is not high, I'll wait for a break of this. That means retest wait for my bullish entry, and then I'll play it there. And this is the point I'll be watching. Now, that does not mean I'm wrong if you, uh, on the short idea if it breaks this. I'm completely wrong if on the idea if it breaks above here. So okay. I think it's an interesting time with consolidation, pull up above, and then break down. So okay. now if it does drop from here, because it doesn't necessarily have to go from there, I believe this level, if the 6640 level breaks, then I think we go back into, um, I think we play it to there. So it's just level to level for me. Okay. So, Let me ask you this, Saeed. I've talked to you several times. Do you trade for the money or because you love it? Um, both. I mean, it's all about the money. Great the answer. Okay. But, yeah. That's but, what yeah, I, I, you know, I knew you were going to say that. So, uh, yeah. But if you I, I made think, less money doing this, would you still do it? Probably, yeah, because that's all I've done. I've never had a right. job. Yeah, you love it. <laughs> okay, everyone, that's yeah, I mean, a big news flash. Uh, Saeed Zaman loves trading. I think, I think, and I think and he enjoys to money, too. So what What a headline, huh? I think you have to love it. I mean, if, any, if you don't love it, you won't do what it takes to, you know. For example, these little, little intricacies I notice. That's how you notice because I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. But if you're not obsessed with something, you, I don't, especially in trading, is a ruthless business where you're wrong, you get punished. So... Yeah. You've got to love it as well. And then the money is a bonus. From one masochist to another, uh, I know I don't know if you sell 